Srila Prabhupada said, when coming to Vrindavan, we should be in the mood of Akrura. After Krishna liberated Keshi and Arista Sura and Vyoma Sura, Kamsa, the king of Mathura, he was becoming extremely disturbed because he understood Krishna was the eighth son of Devaki. He was going to kill him unless he killed Krishna. So he's, he arranged two brutal Rakshasha powerful wrestlers to fight with Krishna and Balaram. And also arranged a massive elephant to assist. And he told the Krura, go and bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. So Akrura, he loved Krishna. He loved Krishna more than everything on earth. He loved Krishna more than anyone on earth. He knew that Krishna was the Supreme Lord. He was his uncle. Krishna was his nephew. And he was being sent on a mission, and the purpose was to kill Krishna and Balaram. So as he was riding in his chariot, he was praying, even though I'm on such a bad mission of such a bad person, Krishna will understand. He knows my heart. He knows my love. And I will see him. After all these years, I will see Krishna. And I will serve Krishna. And I will surrender my heart and my life to Krishna. And all the way, tears pouring from his eyes, his heart in such anticipation, eagerness to surrender to serve and to give his full body, mind, words, and love to Krishna. And that was his prayers. He was deeply absorbed in that spirit. And when he came to the outskirts of Vrindavan, in that state of mind, everything he saw Actually, he was able to see the spiritual world. As we approach, as we surrender to Krishna, Krishna reveals himself accordingly. Vrindavan is his abode. As Akura was coming, he saw in the sacred dust of Vrindavan, the footprints of Krishna and Balaram. Because he was approaching with such humility, with such gratitude, with such appreciation, and he was feeling himself so infinitely Fortunate, a fortune he did not deserve. When he saw the footprints of Krishna, his love for Krishna awakened in such a way, in ecstasy. He fell from his chariot and he laid on the ground and put his body fully in the dust of that footprint of Krishna. He gave his life. And when he carried, went forward, he met with Krishna and Balaram. And Krishna was like a playful child. 
He smiled upon Akrura. He knew his heart. Akrura was a messenger of Kamsa. But Krishna doesn't see the external aspects. Srila Prabhupada explains, Krishna does not see everything that is offered. He sees the intent, the purpose in which it is offered. Now for many people, they would think Akura was really a terrible person. Messenger of Kamsa to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan with the intent to destroy him? But Krishna's the Paramatma. Krishna understood Akura's heart. He was coming with love, with total faith, surrender, with the will to serve. He was coming to offer his life. Krishna smiled upon him. Krishna knew everything. He embraced Akrura. He honored and respected Akrura and brought him home for prasad. Akrura's mission was to take Krishna out of Vrindavan for the first time. Everyone else in the whole Braj Bhumi was very disturbed with this Akrura. But Krishna understood his heart and was pleased. Srila Prabhupada tells, with this mood of surrender. And what does surrender mean? Sharanagati. Surrender is not defeat. In the material sense, when one army loses the war to another, they surrender. There's nothing sweet about that. But Sharanagati is the sweetest of all sweet things. It's when out of love, out of gratitude, we surrender our will to the will of our beloved Krishna. It's the eternal final conquest of truth over illusion. It's when our love for God conquers over our false ego, the ahankar. It's when the bliss, the ananda of the soul once and for all conquers all the miseries due to envy and lust and greed and arrogance and illusion. Sharanagati means liberation. Liberation from selfishness and egoism. Liberation from birth and death. It means Sharanagati entering into the realm of pure, unalloyed love. to receive Krishna's infinite love and to offer our love. And the Srimad Bhagavatam tells, when you water the root of the tree, every part of the tree is nourished. In that Sharanagati, in that sweet surrender of love to Krishna, then we recognize the truth. Mamaivam so jiva loke jiva bhuta sanata. Krishna says, when one is enlightened by this truth, 
one sees that all living beings are in me, are of me, and are mine. Aham bija pradapita. We see every living being as a part of Krishna. And therefore, inherently, we love everyone. We see everything that exists as Krishna's property. <clears throat> Someone asked Srila Prabhupada once, how do we see Krishna everywhere? Because Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, for one who sees me everywhere and everything in me, for him I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. How are we supposed to see Krishna everywhere? Srila Prabhupada, because of his deep compassion, because he cared so deeply for everyone, he could make the most profound, inconceivable, philosophical concepts so simple and practical to understand. May I tell you his answer? Now that's a very, very deep, profound, mystical, inconceivable conception. How to see Krishna everywhere. <clears throat> Not like after many births when I'm liberated. Today, how do I do that? Srila Prabhupada pointed to his table. His spectacles or eyeglasses were sitting there. Srila Prabhupada said, when you see these eyeglasses, what do you think? And the devotee said, I think these are Prabhupada's eyeglasses. And he said, and, and what do you feel when you see those eyeglasses? He said, well, when I see the eyeglasses, I remember you, and when I, when I remember you, my heart feels with, fills with love for you. He said, just like that. Everything is Krishna's. As we become Krishna conscious, we see that everything is Krishna's. And therefore, everything we see, it reminds us of Krishna. And when we're reminded of Krishna, we feel so grateful. And our love awakens for Krishna. When we read Krishna book, when we chant the names of Krishna, when we read the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the more we know about Krishna, the more we naturally love Krishna. And whatever we see when it reminds us of Krishna, I see a pillar. I see a floor. I see a light bulb. There's no bliss in seeing that kind of stuff. But spiritual vision means this is Krishna's energy. That means Krishna's in his energy. And I remember Krishna. And I remember Krishna's names. And I remember Krishna's pastimes. And I remember the beautiful descriptions of Krishna's form. And I appreciate. And seeing that floor is awakening love in my heart. That is Krishna conscious. This is how we enter Vrindavan. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.